Ah, yeah. Honest discussion are here. I'm going to attempt to refute Dr. Polis's latest response as briefly as I possibly can and include clips only when necessary to cut down time. Let's get started. It has come to my attention that I may not always be the best person to refute Dr. Polis. In light of that, I would like to introduce a special guest refuter to refute Dr. Polis. Please give a warm welcome to Dr. Polis. Moreover, the existence of God, as I showed in video 15, can be deduced from premises which are absolutely necessary for the operation of scientific thought. We need a law which conserves laws. But if it doesn't conserve itself, then it leads to another meta-law, and so on. So what we actually need is a law which conserves other laws and also conserves itself. Something which keeps the laws of nature in operation and also conserves itself in being fits the description of what we call God. Dr. Polis here shows that Dr. Polis only proved there must be a reason that laws remain constant that he labels God. Despite Dr. Polis claiming it wasn't a personal God, he continues to argue as though it is a personal and supernatural God that he has proven. This shows Dr. Polis is guilty of the fallacy of equivocation. An example of this would be if I put Dr. Polis on the left side of the screen, meaning that I am to the right. Since I am right, this means I am correct. I am satisfying one definition of the word right, and then claiming that means also conforming to the second definition. This is what Dr. Polis has done, and whenever he claims he has proven God, replace God with the reason laws remain constant, and his claims no longer make any sense. Dr. Polis then asserts my claim that magic would falsify naturalism is unreasonable, because magic is that which is outside of the norm, and therefore not repeatable that God is the maintainer of laws and doesn't deviate from that. Dr. Polis, however, is a Christian who believes in the resurrection. Therefore, miracles would have to be a temporary change in the laws of nature, rendering his argument null and void and naturalism still falsifiable. Dr. Polis then compares me to someone who is stuck inside a room and refuses to believe that the light he sees coming from outside the room is in fact from outside the room. I will then compare him to someone who has never left that room and insists the light bulb isn't the true source of light in the room because we don't understand everything about the light bulb. Polis then describes naturalism and Christianity as both faiths, but different since Christianity is based in the existence of God and God is a proven fact, and therefore naturalism is irrational since it maintains there is no God. Again, he is guilty of the fallacy of equivocation because, well, Christianity is based on the existence of an intelligent God, which is not what Polis proved. Naturalism does not posit that there isn't a reason natural laws remain constant. And again, Polis's argument is fallacious. He is using the faith of naturalism in an attempt to prove the existence of God, and therefore the correct faith of Christianity, uh, through the use of science. If a god exists and we're capable of understanding it, him, or her, then guess what? It's natural. If not, then by definition it is an unknown. Calling the unknowable supernatural is labeling ignorance an attempt to call oneself wise. Insert Socrates turning over in his grave right about here. The problem here is that Honest Discussioner has not shown a single point at which I've gone against the scientific consensus. What I have gone against is the naturalist spin on science. Again, I will have to appeal to my guest refuter. Of course, the majority of scientists don't necessarily agree with me. Yeah. Dr. Polis then responds to my point about finding his unpublished manuscript on Wikipedia, which is against Wikipedia guidelines. Uh, he says Wikipedia isn't a reliable source, and he only claims responsibility for his website, not Wikipedia. I'd, I'd argue Wikipedia is a reliable source, only slightly less reliable than Encyclopedia Britannica, in fact, and also cite that Dr. Polis's reference was discovered to be unreliable by Wikipedia. I am not the only one, uh, I'm not the one that caught that, nor do I have any knowledge of how it was caught. Uh, however, if Dr. Polis does claim responsibility for his website, then the page about his manuscript should be more clear, as it does not clearly state at all that it is an unpublished manuscript. At the top, it calls it a book. 
Dr. Polis then claims that I am shooting at the wrong target when I point to brain states correlating to mind states, and that he believes brain states do reflect what they are attending to, saying his video is on the two subsystem mind clearly states that. Uh, carry on, special guest refuter. We have content and we have awareness of content. Any model of mind must represent both. But the naturalist model can only explain content and the processing of content. Naturalists haven't the faintest idea of how to represent awareness. Of course, I already showed this isn't the case. The Camutini and Tong study clearly states our approach provides a framework for the readout of fine-tuned representations and their subjective contents. This means they know how to represent at least a part of subjective awareness. Polis states that the only way to study awareness is introspection. Then he mischaracterizes the study. As with many naturalists, honest discussioner just doesn't get it. To help him get it, I'm going to use a picture of the Cartesian theater. The Cartesian theater is a concept developed by Daniel Dennett in order to illustrate our common experience-driven understanding of mind. Um, one of the concepts that you use, um, uh, do you still find this useful, this whole notion of the Cartesian theater? you still talk about it? Still people ask you about <laughs> well, it? Well, yeah, I still find it useful to, to warn people about the mistake of the Cartesian theater. Uh, I don't really believe that there is such a thing as the Cartesian theater, but it does serve to illustrate the elements necessary for a theory of mind to be adequate to our experience. In the Cartesian theater there are two elements. There is a presentation illustrated by the screen and the speakers, which is the content I've been discussing, and there is an observer, the so-called homunculus, who illustrates our awareness of the presented content. Now let's look at the experiment that Open Discussioner has been bringing up. What it does effectively is put a camera in, into the Cartesian theater and it takes a picture of the screen. Honest Discussioner believes that taking a picture of the screen is the same as taking a picture of the subject. Of course it isn't. No, they took a picture of the screen and then they said among the things on that screen the subject is aware of the egg. He refuses to acknowledge that the Camatini and Tong study uh, studied awareness of the content without using introspection. Again, something that should not be possible if Polis' theory is correct. Don't take my word for it. Read for yourself. Link is in the underbar. Make sure you read the section, Mind Reading of Attended Orientation. Dr. Polis claims that what they are attending to is not what they are aware of, but, if this, uh, but this doesn't make sense given his theory. His theory is that data processing and content all happen in the brain. A different subsystem is entirely responsible for awareness of the content, and yet part of that awareness is in fact happening in the brain. Given Polis's theory, we should not have any data on the subject except what the subject reports, and yet we can know that what the subject is attending to. Dr. Polis then tries to again explain his theory, saying that our minds direct the data processing of the brain. Lastly, Dr. Polis misunderstands my point when I say subjectivity is the data, in reference to the Camatini and Tong study. He thinks I am implying that subjectivity is simply data, when in fact I was saying that the data in the Camatini and Tong study was in reference to subjectivity. The data presented in that study was about the subjective awareness. That was what I meant.